I'm Debbie Majoris, and I am the Chief Legal Officer and Secretary for the Procter & Gamble Company. I would say there are really two significant challenges that we face since the recession. One is regulators and enforcers have become a lot more active and we have to we obviously have to deal with that so that we can continue to keep Procter & Gamble uh, in full compliance with all of the various laws and regulations we have to comply with around the world. Then you look at um, internally what's happened since the recession. We like a lot of other companies are really trying to reduce costs. When we, when we started legal renewal, we were trying to really look ahead to the future and think about how do we build a legal department that can withstand all of the different ups and downs. Because what was clear was that the business uh, needed us to be even stronger partners than we had been in the past. So we tried to think about how, how, what do they need? Well, they need to get products to market. Okay? So how can we help them? in a way so that we're thinking like they think about what they need and not just thinking exactly as a lawyer would think about a, a legal problem. Well, we had been global in the sense that we had lawyers all over the world. What we really needed to do though was work better together so that we, we had no repetition of work around the world and we were doing a much better job of sharing. Um, our work, our work together. Um, you know, the, the Olympic sponsorship for P&G is the biggest sponsorship that we've ever done for yeah. something like that. It's um, uh, for the Olympics. Um, it was, it was uh, uh, a change to having one company with 34 brands having, um, having uh, uh, advertising campaigns related to the Olympics. I mean, the way we re responded to the Olympics was, I think, um, an offshoot of, of some of what we were trying to do in legal renewal, the way we brought together, the way we've brought together a global team to be able to support the Olympics. People did not fully believe that we were serious, that people could have flexible work schedules and that we would be supportive of that. People still thought that that was just um, just us saying that, but if you really wanted to be successful, you couldn't do it. And so, um, so we decided to not just say the words again, but to back them up. And um, so, for example, I made an announcement that I was going to start working from home um, two days a month. The results have been really dramatic. Um, over 80% of people in our department now have some form of a flexible work schedule, and yet we haven't seen any downturn in our, in our output. I think we've made it okay to have a conversation with your boss and to sit down with your boss and prioritize your work so that you're not feeling so overwhelmed and you still have you know, your whole energetic self to take home to your family, and that's really important.